Good evening. This is a true story about the richest person I've ever met and the selfless act that they did. I can't tell you all the details, but I believe this is a story that deserves to be told. In approximately 1996, give or take a few years, my mom's ex-husband Bobby, who recently passed away on his 93rd birthday, came home crying. I'd only seen the man cry once before, and that was when his son died. Bobby told me this story, and now I will tell it to you. Bobby was a real estate broker for the star of this story. I will call him Guy, because I don't want to give away his full name, since he did this act anonymously, and I don't want to bring him any unwanted attention. What Guy did is one of the kindest acts I've ever heard of, still to this day. As far as I know, Guy is still alive and in his 80s. Before I tell you Guy's story, I want to first mention what I knew about him at the time. Guy owned a dry cleaning company he inherited from his father, and after expanding the chain, he sold it for $25 million in the 80s. I know this because my mom told me about it after Guy took her and Bobby out to dinner to celebrate. Guy invested the money in building private mini storages, which he operated until they were leased up, and then he sold the properties for three to four times what they cost to build. He was worth about $100 million, Bobby estimated. Another thing I remember about Guy is he would call the house at 6 a.m. on Sunday, and I was trained to tell him that Bobby was in the shower and then go wake him up. My opinion of Guy at the time was he thought only about money. Now on with our story. Guy owned an RV campground a few miles south of the Texas Medical Center so that family members of people going through cancer treatments wouldn't have to pay for expensive hotels while their loved ones are fighting for their lives. Bobby and Guy had spent the afternoon looking at commercial properties to purchase, and they were near Guy's campground, so they stopped in to visit. Soon after they arrived, a man approached Guy and he was weeping as he stated, I will never be able to repay you. This is the greatest thing anyone's ever done for me. Anyone's ever done for anyone. My son is alive because of you. After the man left, Guy told Bobby about the man's 13-year-old son needed a lung transplant. A donor had become available, but the cost was $1 million. The man had insurance, although the insurance company would only pay up to 500000 this man was paying $12 to $14 per day to rent a space to park his RV, and Guy paid half a million dollars to save this boy's life. Another part of this story that really touches me is Guy had known Bobby for 20 to 30 years at the time and not mentioned a word about this. I find this to be even more admirable on top of an already remarkable gesture. Sadly, I do not know the name of the person who received the transplant or if they are alive today. The part I do remember is the donor was a 19-year-old killed in a motorcycle accident in Ohio. The lung was too big for a 13-year-old, so in flight, they had to trim the lung down to fit in the boy's body. It took three specialized surgical teams and a plane equipped with an operating room, although it's still hard to believe there can be a price tag on saving a human life. Whether you believe in a higher power or fate, something brought that man to that campground and he met the right person. Guy had the means and the heart, and what he did makes me thankful there are some very wealthy people. In summary, next time you hear someone that wants to tax the rich more, tell them about a guy named Guy. Thank you for listening. I think this is a story worth telling.